Jul på Vesterbro og Westbridge Christmas Episode 3 Svangerskabets ulidelige korthed The unbearable shortness Briefness uh, Quickness, whatever Of pregnancy And But like an old timey word for pregnancy Yes, uh, another episode I love Let's just, Yes, spoilers for these first three episodes Let's dive right in So Let's see. Yeah, we open on, you know, Stuart hearing this bad thing on the news, and he's like, oh no, and it's because it's the wrong kind of tea. And then we get what I think might be my father's favorite joke of the entire 24 episode run, where Stuart, and it is very funny, Stuart, you know, pours a little bit of liquor into the tea and is like, oh, that's. That's the kind of thing that'll put hair on your chest. And then he pours in a bunch more and has a sip. Oof, that's the kind that'll take those hairs right back off. Which is, yeah, that's... <laughs> and... Yeah, Danny is being very nervous about the whole pregnancy thing. I'm talking about... You know, once he spent money on this drug, that drug, and that drug, there's barely any money left for himself. And then we get uh, one of the very ugly jokes where, you know, Stuart goes into the basement, I mean, garage and car hole, and, uh, you know, is freaking out that they are listening to Muslim music and have hung, like, banners with Muslim writing you know on the on the wall and and that there's you know now there's more than one Muslim and I get that we are you know Stuart is not supposed to be a positive character but this is like Honest Madison has made similar jokes in his stand-up where he'll whine about you know you know when I go into a Mexican restaurant. I don't want Mexican culture. I just want the food. Technically, that food is Danish food now. And it's like, just, yeah, he's, he's really infuriating sometimes. You know, nobody's forcing you to go in there. If you don't want their culture, then don't go into their restaurant. I've never heard him say that about, like, Danish. He loves Danish culture. You know, he's like, oh, you know, <clears throat> you know, amazing, absolutely love it, proud to be Danish. Well, why aren't they proud, allowed to be proud to be Mexican? Why aren't they allowed to be proud to be something other than Danish in Denmark? That, you know, so, yeah, it is very funny with the, the vodka, you know, the... Um, Igor just offers, you know, drinks some and has, and, and I like the fact that he doesn't even have to like look around for it. He just has a full bottle of vodka in his coat at all times, which, you know, yeah, the, the show doesn't have the highest opinion of, of Russians either. Um, but, but yeah, um, and he is also a funny character. There is like a good, they do a good job on, like his his look, the makeup, you know, he's got various like attributes. Like I feel like his his little bit of facial hair is supposed to be like an exaggeration of the ah oh, crap. What do you call that in English? Uh, see, we call it a like a goat's beard in in Danish, but yeah, an exaggeration of like Lenin's, you know. And he's got the the one eye. There's definitely some like Rasputin going on, you know. And, yeah, despite being in Denmark, he is wearing this very stereotypically Russian, like the kind of stuff they would wear for the Russian winter. <clears throat> Substantially colder than the Danish one. So, but yeah, you know, he's let, he has a little bit himself and offers it to, to Stuart. And Stuart just keeps drinking and drinking. And he's like, thanks, you know, just not like, oh, I'm sorry. I, this wasn't just for me, was it? And, yeah, we have the, the jokes about, you know, oh, bag over 
the, the head of the girl. And again, it's like this thing, like, you have a teachable moment there. Like, you can point out, you know, yeah, there, there are a number of Muslims, not all, but a number who do believe that it is wrong for a woman to make herself, you know, yeah, visually attractive. But the, you know, like, is it really better what we have, you know, like, stereotypically in the West of, of like, pressure for women to always look amazing and always dress to, like, there's, there are men who will get angry if a woman is trying to dress down. They'll, they'll feel like it's an insult because they feel entitled to look at her. Is that any better? And, let's see... Yeah, and after after finishing an entire bottle of vodka, and it's not like they forget. It's not like a continuity error because he still got the bottle when he goes up there. You know, oh, ah, it's empty. Well, time for a beer. <laughs> you need a palate cleanser after that thing, you know. And he's singing this song where he keeps using the the phrase that I feel like the most accurate English language version is probably. That'll teach you. Which, again, yes, we said that a million times back in, like, the early 2000s in, in Denmark. If, you know, us teenage boys, so... Which I was at the time. I am not anymore. Because that's how time works. But, yeah, so that's... I'm, I'm not sure if this was the first place we heard it. Definitely, we imitated Honest Madison a lot. <coughs> <coughs> And then we get the abortion joke, which, I mean, I kind of appreciate that, like, the, the, oh, hold on, no, yeah, I was about to say, they're not suggesting that they try to push Andy into having an abortion, but no, I guess that is the implication Stuart is, is making. For, yeah, for a second, I, I remembered as, it wrong, I remembered it as this being the flashback where his father is like raising children that's women's work and that was why he was saying to Danny you don't have to be a father but no the implication is you know try to push her into to having an abortion so that's Jesus Christ has his birthday and a Christmas Eve apparently and yeah we have the the rap which I will admit I as much as there's some really nasty lyrics in there, I do, I at least used to have a soft spot for for that rap. And yeah, he goes over, you know, <laughs> I have money for the, let's see, I have junk for the, I have money for the junk that I want to buy because of the junk that I've already sold. Actually, yeah, hold on, does that, in, in Danish, we when the, the word junk can refer to like drugs, I guess it does it in English. That's always like how I I'm not sure I've ever heard a native English speaker say pusher as like a word for the the noun for drug dealer, even though it is technically an English word. Anyway, let's see and. Uh, yeah, and the uh, yes, yes, we meet Greta, which I believe rounds out the entire main cast. Uh, yeah, by the end of the third episode, we've met every regular character on the show, and the the yeah, you know, of course, they had to introduce yet another you know, problem for the, 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 yeah, they, they, it looks like they've resolved the, the issue of money to, to take care of Danny by the fact that the, the, the hot dog stand is being, you know, it may have no ketchup, but it is being repaired. So there, but now there's, 
and additional financial pressure. Look, it's difficult to make up enough plot for 24 episodes. You know, it's fair enough. I also really love the absolutely disgusting joke that, you know, Stuart drops the hot dog and then picks it up off the floor and puts it among the other hot dogs, which is just, oh my god. And, yeah, I, I like Stuart's lines to Greta about things he's forgotten. And one of them is, I think I forgot to clean my pipe. On the other hand, I don't, I don't smoke a pipe, but I could start. Tell you what, I'm going to go by, you know, just, wow. And, yeah. She explains, uh, you know, he has to pay the the overdue rent, and then we get yet another, you know, the, the episode ends, and we get another speaker voice, and Greta, having not heard it before, again, is, you know, like other characters, is like, what, what's, what's that, you know, and, and I love that even Stuart, like, Stuart is trying to, to, you know, like, explain, and even that, the speaker is like, shh, must be a librarian and then we get the the outro song which I forget if I've mentioned that that is a, yeah it, it works that it is this sort of I feel like solemn is not quite the word but it's it's a little less like poppy and energetic compared to like the the intro <clears throat> which is of course important because you know the intro fires you up for wanting to see the episode the outro is like easing you back out of it so that you don't sit there like yo come on more episode and <clears throat> yeah some of the lyrics are incredibly messed up and we see in you know one of the lyrics is about you know is is expressing this animosity there is between Danes and Swedes which it's a whole thing. It's always been ridiculous. I, I'd like to think that I never agreed with it, but I am afraid I may have still repeated some of those things just because it was everywhere. So many people were expressing anger towards Sweden, but um, you know, it's a there's a historical, you know, yeah, but it's completely disproportionate. Anyway, something that you might not know about the outro song is despite like when you just see the end of an episode of this show, it just sounds like, oh, he's just listing all the things he doesn't like about Christmas. I guess maybe he doesn't like Christmas. But if you actually if you um I'm afraid I don't I have no idea where it is. I have like a hundred CDs. But somewhere among them I have the soundtrack for this and if you listen to the entire song it actually and you know the like after he's listed all these things he doesn't like then he gets into I really love Christmas so you know I almost feel bad because I don't think that ever plays on the show itself it's just it, it's it's like that so there's that song um, let's see it appears on scrubs once um, let's see, I think, is it, oh, no, that's definitely not it, um, ah, crap, I, suddenly I can't remember a single lyric from it, um, yeah, anyway, there's a, there's a song on, on Scrubs that, where they play, like, the first minute of it. And they apparently like got the actual singer to, to appear on camera next to the characters and playing the guitar and everything. And if you only watch that part, it sounds like it's a sad song. But in reality, it goes on to, you know, the, like the chorus is something like, oh, love will, you know, it's okay though. All this bad stuff in life is okay that he's just listed because love will set you free. And, you know, the first time I heard the entire one, the, the, you know, which, yeah, I got the title off the, the episode end credits and, yeah, looked up the actual song. And I was like, okay, that's not at all where I thought that was going. 
and yeah, uh, that is it for this one. So next video I will try to make tomorrow, and yeah, catch you then.